As security professionals, one thing we're very focused on is the information in our logs. It's very, very difficult to see everything happening in our environment. So very often we are collecting all of these logs and looking through them to be able to identify security concerns or understand what's happening in our environment. There's a lot of really juicy information inside of these logs. But one of the challenges for us is that there is just so much of, of that information available. If you had to read through all of your logs manually, you'd never have enough time in the day. So a lot of this process is automated. That's because these logs are coming from routers. They're coming from switches. They're coming from our IPS IDS systems. They're coming from scanners, our applications, our in stations, our servers. They're coming from so much information. You would, as a human being, never be able to keep up with all of it. And of course, different parts of the organization need to be able to identify different kinds of information. From a security perspective, you want to know if there are any security concerns. The server administrators may want to know the health of their servers and understand if there are any problems associated with the hardware or the network connection going into the servers. The network team may be interested in the throughput to the internet and make sure that their uh, their equipment is running at peak efficiency. So if even if you're consolidating all of these logs together, you may have different parts of the organization who are taking advantage of the information within those. So this is where automation is key. This is where you can have everything consolidated, be able to parse through that information automatically, create logs and reports for you automatically on that information, create beautiful charts. And there are a lot of both open source and commercial options to be able to do that. To really be able to take advantage of that log information, you have to know what's normal. You have to create a baseline of what normally happens in your environment. If you have 100 people suddenly authenticate to the network, is that normal? Is that not normal? And you should always be looking for those types of things. To be able to do that, you also have to keep in mind that things do change at different times of the month, different times of the year. You may have some processes that occur in the accounting department at the end of every month. You may have processes that occur every quarter because you need to create reports and information based on your business. So don't be thrown when these things happen. You may see spikes in activity, but sometimes those spikes are completely something that's that is normal. You want to look for things like the number of incorrect authentications. You want to look for the number of downloads from a database server. You want to understand how much throughput is going through your network, how many sessions are active, and anything else that can give you an idea of the operational impacts of the traffic and the systems on your network. There are cases where looking at these logs may be able to give you some insight that might have you think about what's happening on your environment. A good example of this is in May 2011, the organization LastPass, which has a single password system, allows you to have password administration, password management inside of your browser and on your computer. They were looking at their logs and noticed what they called an anomaly associated with network traffic. We aren't exactly sure what that anomaly was, but they felt that more information was being downloaded from a particular server than normal. Now, normally, they have these internal internal systems, these internal processes that they do. But they examined their internal processes and examined their logs, and they realized it wasn't them. They weren't the ones creating this extra amount of traffic on their network. So they did not have a verified data breach, but they felt that the potential was there. So what they did was require everyone to change their password. These are millions of users of LastPass. But it's a very good example of how if you understand your baseline and you're keeping a very close eye on it, you could perhaps stop a very bad potential problem before it ever gets out of hand. Once you have that baseline in place, you want to get an alert. And this is what happened with LastPass, is they have systems that check these things. And if we ever exceed a, th a threshold that we've created in our baseline, then we are alerted by this. And these thresholds become very, very valuable. And it'll, it'll tell you how, how far you went over the threshold, what the certain situation is. There are security thresholds. There are operational thresholds. You want to look at how much bandwidth is through the network or how many people have had bad logins, bad authentications occurred in a certain amount of time. These can be very very, very valuable for you to get a more proactive view of what's happening in your environment. So you want to look at things like disk space and excessive CPU utilization and memory usage and a lot of different kinds of metrics. From a security perspective, you would like to see how many attempted or failed logins over a certain amount of time. And maybe it isn't a situation where you immediately are identified. Maybe there's a normal area where things are in the green zone. And maybe if it starts to get a little bit higher, it's a yellow. And maybe you only get one message about it. Or maybe it jumps into a red area 
and you have some automated processes in place to help mitigate the situation, maybe through an automated process, or maybe it sends you an email and sends you a page and calls you. You can have a lot of different things occur. You also want to be able to track these metrics over time. You're obviously not going to be able to watch these every second of the day. So at the end of the day, maybe have a trend report created that shows you over the last 24 hours how many failed login attempts did we have. And you'd be able to see that in a reference to the time of day. It can be very, very useful. And of course, that can be automated it as well. There's already a number of reporting systems that will automate this so that they can alert you and be able to create trend reports for you all at the same time. As you can imagine, these logs contain very, very, very sensitive information. They've got IP addresses and usernames and the types of things that are occurring in your network. So they are a security concern. And there's some very sensitive information inside of those. Because of that, you want to be sure that they are as secure as possible. If there's a way to secure the communications path between the system that you're polling and the place where your logs are being stored, you want to be sure to take advantage of that. So that if anybody did tap into that connection, did capture packets, associated with that, they'd have no idea what was inside of those packets. You may also need logs for legal reasons afterwards. You may need to make sure that you can go to a section of your log six months later and confirm that nobody's tampered with that. That becomes very important from a legal perspective. Maybe you're performing MD5 hashes when you store those logs and you archive them. Later on, six months later, if you want to perform the same MD5 hash, you can compare it to what you took six months ago so that you can be sure that nobody has tampered with those logs. The access to these logs should also be restricted. You should make sure that only people necessary to read those logs have access to read them, and only devices that are able to write to those logs can write to them. Otherwise, you may have third parties that are able to gather information or put information inside of your logs that really should not be doing so.